Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm finally able to bring you some gameplay videos thanks to a couple of buddies of mine driving down for a booster box tournament. The rules were we each split a booster box and if you won against your opponent you got to take one of their packs so the more you win the more packs you have to open at the end of the tournament. We decided to spice things up a little bit. We wrote our names on the pack so whenever you took a pack from your opponent at the end you get to see what you actually took from them. So Mark is going to go first here and he's going to play down the buggy. Buggy is a new card and it's a staple search card for a bank of being able to search the top five for an impel down card and put it into your hand. So basically it's the Nami for blue. He decides to grab the Inazuma off the buggy and pass his turn. So Steven's going second here. He starts out with two Dawn. And right away he's going to play down the Nami. So he gets to search his top five for a straw hat card and add it to his hand. He's going to check his hand and think about what he wants to grab off of this Nami here. Okay, so it looks like he decides to grab the Gum Gum Jet Pistol which is a really powerful card. For four, you get to remove a 6k power or less. And then he plays down the Sunny Coon for one Dawn. So this is basically the ideal start for Zoro here. Grabbing the Jet Pistol there, I think is gonna be really important for this matchup because Ivankov likes to play big bodies. Mark plays down another buggy to search his top five for an Impel Down card. So right now Mark is drawing cards, but Ivankov players typically defend life early and get their hand size down so that they can eventually make use of Ivankov's ability to draw two cards at the end of the turn if you have zero in hand. So while he is increasing his hand size early here, he'll be able to maintain life until he has the Dawn to place down some of his big bodies. And he decides to grab the Death Wink, which is a 3 cost event counter that increases your leader or one of your characters by 6,000. Then you draw cards until you have 2 in hand. He attaches 2 Dawn to his event called Leader and swings 7k into Steven. And Steven takes his first damage here. I did do a collaborative deck profile with Steven on his Red Zoro deck, so if you're interested in that, I'll link it in the description below. Steven starts this turn out by playing down his Nami again to search the top 5 for a Straw Hat card. This time he quickly grabs the Nico Robin and that's two cards with removal potential that he searched off of Nami. He swings 5k to lead with Zoro. And yeah it looks like Mark is going to counter out. Easy counter 1k and Steven plays the Nico Robin and passes. So Robin might not seem as strong in the Ivankov matchup, but even getting Robin to clear out those buggies so that they don't swing into his one cost attackers is going to go a long way, I think. Mark just swings 5k into leader and yeah, Steven does decide to take this damage as well. So. A two life lead is nice for Mark, but Steven does have a nice board established, so Zoro can quickly barrage with attacks and come back. Ooh, a strong play there with five cost crocodile for Mark. So with his lead, that is a problem because a 7k attacker that you get to use for the rest of the game is a threat and it's hard to counter out on that. Steven is deciding what he wants to do here. We know he has the pistol in hand. He starts off though by just swing 5k to lead. And yep, Mark counters out again with a Corona. He attaches the Don Nico Robin, removes the buggy, and Mark does decide to take this life. And it looks like we are going to see the Otama pistol. So Steven viewing that crocodile as a threat. Typically you like to save the Otama Pistol combination for the 6 cost Luffy in the event golf matchup, but you know, this stage in the game, I think, uh, you know, Steven thought that that was the right play to make. We'll see if it was. Mark swings 5k to Nico Robin, 
and Steven counters out 2k with Brook. Oh, and we do see the Ivankov into, yep, the six cost Luffy. So this is where Ivankov gets scary because for just seven Dawn, you get to play two big bodies onto the board and Luffy's on playability, you get to discard two cards and put a four cost or less back to the owner's hand. Steven starts off by putting a Dawn under his leader Zoro. And really thinking about this turn, what he wants to do. Um, okay, so he attaches two Dawn to Nami. That makes her a 5k swing. And Mark actually decides to take this one, so we're even here at 3 3. Looks like we're going to get another 5k swing with Sunny Coon. And Mark counters out of that one with a 2k counter, Bond Clay. And a 6k to lead, and he counters out again with a 2k Mihawk. So, yeah, that big hand that Mark had is now down to just one card. Steven plays down Rush Zoro, catches a Dawn, making it a 7k swing. And Mark is going to take that. So this is what I was saying earlier, you know, Zoro is able to apply so much pressure with so many swings. So he just got four swings and now Steven has a life advantage three to two. But Mark's board is looking pretty strong here. Okay, so we see the stage card, New Kama Land. And with that card, you get to draw a card and then trash a card. And then you get to trash up to three cards. So he decides to pitch the crocodile. And then, yep, like I said earlier, buggy can be used to swing at some of Steven's one cost attackers here. So the Nami goes down to the buggy. And then we get a 7k swing into Zoro with the Avankov character card. Steven's not sure if he wants to let Zoro go here or not. And he decides to counter with a Brook and a Robin, so he had to cover at least 3k to protect his Zoro. And then. Mark doesn't play around, he swings 8k with leader into Zoro because he really wants to get rid of that. And now Steven's left with uh, low attack power on his board. And then Mark decides to swing 9k with Luffy and Steven will be forced to take another life. Oh, actually two lives because uh, Luffy's ability also gives him double attack. Dawn times two. You get to trash two cards, send a character with four costs or less back to the opponent's hand, so he sent back the Sunny Coon, and he gets double attack, so taking two life there from Steven. And Steven is definitely a tough spot here. Right now the board heavily favors Mark, and he can potentially go for game next turn. So he's really racking his brain here to figure out what he needs to do. He does decide to go with the Edward Newgate play here, bumping his power up by 2k until the start of his next turn. So Mark is going to need some bigger swings to deal the last two damage he needs for the win. Steven decides to try and get rid of Mark's Luffy since he only has two cards in hand, but Mark does have the answer with a 2k counter. And Steven passes his turn. So now Mark has to cover 7k with his swings, which uh, Steven's hand size I think currently is at 7, so he might be able to counter out and survive this turn. 
But Mark doesn't necessarily have to go all in here because he does have two life left still. So we're going to see a 9k swing from the Luffy, but we're not going to be activating his ability. No need to take the double life because Steven's only down to one life. But deciding not to return a character, you know, Nami and Otama aren't the biggest threats. Anything's a threat in Zoro though. Steven does counter with three 1Ks. Another 9k swing into Zoro. And once again, Steven counters out with three 1Ks. So now he's down to just one card in hand, but because he was able to defend those two attacks, Mark is only left with one attack. So Mark won't be able to win this turn, but we'll see if he can survive the next turn. He does swing an even 7k into Steven's leader, and Steven does go down to zero life. And then we see the Inazuma blocker, which is a 7k if you have one card or less in hand. So Mark deciding not to use leader ability there, that way he keeps the one card in hand. And it's a good strategy here because Steven does have that Edward Newgate on the field, and if he gets two dawn under him when attacking gets to remove a 3k power so you know steven could potentially drop a notama and get rid of the inazuma but mark actually gets use out of it by blocking the 7k leader swing from steven closing out a game is always tough and this is surely steven's last turn given the board state and his hand size so Every decision is crucial, especially when it comes to allocating Dawn. Swinging 7 with Zoro is a smart choice because it forces Mark to block with Inazuma or take the damage since the most he could have countered out with having one card in hand was 2k. So now Steven needs 3 more swings, but he does have 3 more bodies. He decides to attach 4 Dawn to Nami, making her a 7k swing since uh, Zoro has a Dawn underneath him. Mark does decide to take this life. So it looks like he has 4 Dawn, that's enough to make Otama a 5k swing, but in true Steven fashion he has the Makino making Otama a 7k swing. Mark has to take it, and then Whitebeard swings for game. Mark revealing his hand there, he actually had no counter from his life, so even though Ivankov lost, I think that this game is a great showcase for the deck. Definitely a great showcase from Zoro 2, displaying how you can survive at the end of a game, and as long as you have bodies on the board, anything is possible, but yeah, what a game. It doesn't really get much closer than that one, and I'm glad we were able to record it and share it with you all. But that does do it for this gameplay video. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the setup. And if you enjoyed the match, give this video a like. I have a few more to upload, so keep an eye out for those. And consider subscribing for more One Piece card game content. And I'll see you all in the next video.